Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Omar Thabit here from Oz Media. Um, as you know, uh, we will not be going live today um, for the Fantasy Guys uh, like we usually do, but we wanted to do a quick short video, or at least I wanted to do a quick short video today just to make sure that you guys are up to date with what's going on in, in the news and the sports world that is. Um, so again, this is episode 21 of the Fantasy Guys Wednesday edition. I have three quick takeaways. So this is going to be a quick video, just kind of touching on some of the topics that are happening right now in the sports world all of them are nfl related by the way so again this is three quick takeaways and this show by the way is sponsored by hammer time true value hardware forts and quick lube and unique coney island shout out to those businesses shout out to hammer time shout out to forts and shout out to unique coney island great businesses support local uh, businesses because they support you know our local things that we do around here as well so thank you to those local businesses now um, three quick takeaways before I actually do that I just also want to say it is the month of February which is black history month so Oz media will like to focus on a lot of things relating to black history so for the table talk podcast we will be having all of our guests will be um, from the black slash African American descent great conversations we already got them planned out looking forward to that and um, also for the next two Two weeks uh, for the Fantasy Guys Wednesday edition, we will be going live with the Hemtramck High School Cosmos girls basketball team and boys basketball team. Um, it will be the boys basketball team first on the 9th. Uh, we will be calling that segment Brotherhood, just talking to the seniors on the team and talking about how they grew up and everything like that and grow up together and playing basketball. And then for the girls team, we will be uh, discussing uh, same thing. It's going to be called Sisterhood and they'll discuss what it was like growing up with one another um, from young age till now up until their senior year of basketball. So we're looking for forward to that and hopefully you'll be tuning in to watch that as well. But with all that said, here we go. Three quick takeaways. Number one, let's start off with the major news of Brian Flores, the former Miami football head football coach, is suing the NFL, the Denver Broncos, the New York Giants, and the Miami Dolphins for discrimination against black head coaches. Okay, so for those of you, there's a lot of, a lot of comments. People are sharing their thoughts on what's going on. And I want to share my thoughts. First of all, uh, the NFL, back at it again with uh, racism and dealing with racism and someone um, accusing uh, the NFL for racism. Well, first and foremost, I like to start off with this. Um, I, I believe the NFL has some responsibility, but I feel like the biggest people that have uh, responsibility in this situation are the owners. The owners can fix this situation plain and simple. Hire more minority slash black head coaches or positions of leadership um, in their staff, on their staff. It's very simple, just do it. These people are proven. They have done a great job elsewhere. They have done a great job where they're at right now currently. So I don't understand why this is still happening. Brian Flores had a 24 and 25 record in Miami. Um, that was with, uh, the, his first year was without Tua. Uh, his last two years was, you know, a roller coaster with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua, you know, Tua getting hurt a few times. So realistically, this guy pretty much has had a 500 record. And I knew, I knew instantly when he uh, got fired that it was more than um, just his record in the NFL. But I also... You know, I think it has a lot to do with Tua. I heard that he didn't want Tua. But my point is, is that this guy is a proven um, uh, great mind in the NFL, knows what he's doing. And yet, um, he is a free agent in the market right now in the head coaching vacancy. And he's still not getting hired. And then comes out these text messages with Bill Belichick. Very embarrassing. Um, uh, you know, Bill Belichick uh, probably sent the wrong text or it felt like he sent the wrong text. Uh, he was supposed to send it to Brian Dable, the new head coach of the Giants, but mistakenly sent the text uh, to Brian Flores, congratulating him on the Giants job before he even interviewed for the Giants job. And Brian Flores asked Bill Belichick, do you know something I don't know? Then Bill Belichick realized he was texting the wrong person, which is very embarrassing. One of the best head coaches, if not the greatest head coach of all time in the NFL, uh, sending a wrong text to the wrong person. And so this is what, that's just a minor thing of what is actually going on. Um, and and kind of, you know, first of all, you got the Rooney rule as well. You know, the Rooney rule, and this is what uh, Brian Flores came out by saying, like, this is uh, sham interviews, basically. Basically, the Rooney rule is, suggests or tells NFL teams to make sure that they interview minority coaches before coming up with a final decision of hiring a head coach, uh, whoever it is that they decide to hire. And, um, 
yeah, going back to this Rooney rules, I this is a whole nother topic. Like this is to me like uh, this is the NFL trying. And basically, if you do hire a coach of minority, um, you know, and if you prep a guy for a leadership position, not just fire, hiring a head coach, a GM position, anything like that, you know, the team that prepped them gets compensation. So they, they get like a third round pick or, you know, they get compensatory picks. OK, so that alone is already kind of weird that we are giving teams draft picks because they're hiring minority coaches. You know, so that is already weird, but that's the NFL trying, and I know you can go back and forth with it. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of it, uh, but that should tell you, suggest to you that there's already a problem. Uh, but again, going back to this, again, this is probably not the NFL. This is the head coach, I mean, the, the, the owners. You know, there's 32 owners in the NFL right now, and only two of them are minority descent. You know, 30 of them are white males. And, you know, that kind of suggests, you know, what is going on right now in the NFL. And, um, again, there are people out there that says it's not about color. It's not about race. It's about hiring the right people for the job. Okay, so let's move on to that segment, right? David Culley was the head coach of the Houston Texans. Yes, they finished, I think, 4-13, uh, which is not a good record. But, you know, they finished better than the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit Lions have a guy named Dan Campbell, who I'm a big fan of as our head coach. Uh they had a better record than us. Uh, kind of like, you know, they we're both in the same situation of where we're at right now, right? We're trying to both, um, you know, get, we're both in a revamp situation, right? So, you know, this guy, David Culley, had a team of the Texans. First of all, getting four wins alone with the roster that he had is already an accomplishment, right? Like, to me, he gets fired after one season. Like, how disrespectful is that? Like, this guy comes from wherever he came from. I don't know exactly. But this guy gets fired after one season. Um, where like basically like hey I'm sorry you you know it was fun having you but goodbye thank you for being here like this guy had a rookie quarterback in Davis Mills starting for majority of the year who by the way played great which I think probably was one of the best rookie quarterbacks in the NFL this season um, very efficient did a great job with what he had uh, and gets fired after one season not a great look uh, you know Jim Caldwell Detroit right I mean you know, there are people that are calling for Jim Caldwell's firing, but at the end of the day, this guy had an above 500 record. We haven't had 500 records since Jim Caldwell has left. You know, the Lions have had not had have not have had a 500 or above record since Jim Caldwell has left. We fired this guy, and it's been all downhill since. So, you know, you got that situation. You got Jim Caldwell. You know, you got Hugh Jackson now coming out, and even Brian Flores coming out and saying, uh, you know, these owners are offering to pay them to lose on purpose. And, you know, for those of you that are saying like, yeah, take the money. These guys are offering a hundred grand to lose the game to these head coaches. Sure, take the money. But guess what? These records are going to be forever with these head coaches. They're, they get blamed for the losses. You know, teams, you know, the fan base, when they see your team losing, you get blamed for the losses. Uh, and not anyone else. I mean, quarterbacks as well. But at the end of the day, the head coach is the ultimate guy that gets blamed for the losses. Okay, so, you know, they, this is going to be with them forever. And then it gives the owners more excuses to fire them when their record is where it's, where it's at. So, you know, these are situations that are coming out. And, you know, listen, I'm a huge fan of the NFL. I want what's best for the NFL. And I want what's best for everyone. And we want to see this happen. We... You know, there are five head coaching vacancies left as of today, five of them. So, you know, if you were to think about on the top of your head, who are the best people available? You know, you got the offensive coordinator from San Francisco. People are having rumors about him. You got Kellen Moore, which I'm not a fan of, by the way, of the Cowboys, because I thought that offense could be a lot better than what it actually was this year. Um, even though they had great numbers, like I thought it could be through the roof numbers. Um, then you got Aaron Glenn, which I hope he does not leave, defensive coordinator, defensive coordinator for the Lions. You have, um, you have, uh, you got Brian Flores, you know, you got Eric being me from the, the Kansas City Chiefs. So you have African-American head coach or coaches that are proven that can do well for head coaching vacancies. So we'll see. We'll see. You know, you talk about the best people for the job. You know, there's five jobs left. So we'll see what ends up happening in the NFL. Um, and for those of you that are wondering, this guy, Brian Flores, by the way, took a risk. You know, we all seen what happened with Colin Kaepernick when he spoke out. You know, we haven't seen him in the NFL on the field since. You know, Brian Flores, when he came out with his statement, he even said, this might stop me from getting a job in the NFL. But he's doing this. He's taking this risk. So kudos to you, Brian Flores. Way to start the conversation. And for those of you, you know, 
this is what might come out of it, and this is the only thing that might come out of it, which is a conversation, but at least they're trying. So Brian Flores, kudos to you for starting a conversation. And you know, this is something that needs to be discussed, needs to be talked about, because I'm gonna be honest with you, some of these coaches that are getting hired, like Urban Meyer got hired in Jacksonville. Like this guy had no proven track record in the NFL and got hired in Jacksonville with a history of, you know, you know, situations that, you know, that are gonna go with him for the rest of his life. And we all know how that turned out. So he had a bad situations coming into the situation and they hired him and he didn't even last the whole season. So, you know, th these situations need to be addressed for sure. You know, and, and we, we will, we'll see what happens. Oh, let's not forget that Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a couple assistant coaches that are black um, assistant coaches that are deserving of a head coach position as well. So we'll see how this all works out, hopefully for the best of uh, the people and for the NFL as well uh, together. Um, the second big news we had was Tom Brady retiring from the NFL. What a very, very uh, sad and you know, moment for the NFL because you're talking about not only the greatest quarterback of all time, not only the greatest NFL player of all time, but I sincerely believe the greatest athlete of all time for sure in my generation. Uh, this guy was a legend. He won seven Super Bowls, five Super Bowl MVPs. This guy got to the Super Bowl, I believe, nine or ten times. Half of his career, he made it to the Super Bowl. If you were to split his career, his t over 20-year career in the NFL, into two, so 10 years and 10 years, or whatever, how many years he played, I believe like a 21 or 22 seasons. If you were to split it in half, both careers would make a, a Hall of Fame. Both of his careers would make it to the Hall of Fame. This guy won two Super Bowls after the age of 40. Two Super Bowls. He is in contention of an NFL MVP season at the age of 44. In his final season at 44 years old, he had the most passing touchdowns and the most passing yards in the NFL. At 44. So why do I crown him as one of the greatest ever? First of all, the quarterback position is the toughest position in any team sport. It's tougher than pitching in baseball. It's tougher than playing point guard in basketball. So the quarterback position by far is the toughest position in, the, in, in any sport, in any team sport by far. So, you know, you compare people to Brady, like compare people like to Tiger Woods, to Michael Jordan, and you know, all these other greats, right? And I think what makes him over the top is how great he was even after his prime years. And, and that's what makes him, to me, in my opinion, one of the greatest athletes of all time. Oh, and by the way, he won me two fantasy football rings in my career as well. So shout out to you, Tom Brady. We appreciate you. He, um, he is the only Michigan man that I would represent. He is the only Michigan man that I would stand for. And he's the only Michigan man that I would sit here and say like, yo, I got full respect for. I mean, I got respect for a couple other Michigan players, but Tom Brady, the greatest of all time in any sports, period. That's all I have to say with Tom Brady. But speaking of Michigan man, my third quick take is the rumor that Jim Harbaugh is heading to Minnesota. I heard that that deal is all but done, all but finalized. So Jim Harbaugh is leaving college football to go back to the NFL, where he also has success with the San Francisco 49ers and Colin Kaepernick, by the way. Uh, but Jim Harbaugh, um, let's recap his career at Michigan, if he's officially leaving, by the way. So this is just uh, uh, rumors, by the way, but uh, from what I'm hearing, multiple reports are saying that he will be going to Minnesota. So with that said, he had seven seasons at the University of Michigan. His record was 61-24. Not bad. He also had a great NFL record as well. Um, but let me give you these numbers. He was 1-5 against Ohio State. So up until this year, he was uh, he had not won a game against Ohio State. And 1-5, you know, doesn't you do the math, seven seasons, that's only six games. Let's not talk about the COVID year where... Uh, you know, quote unquote, you know, players with COVID, they couldn't play the game. Uh, me personally, kind of questionable situation, right? I mean, I personally think it was more of like a, hey, we're going to get spanked and let's not play Ohio State to make us look bad, right? But, we'll, you know, we're not going to discuss on, uh, you know, rumors and stuff like that, right? He was three and four against go right through for MSU. So a losing record against his two biggest rivals, Michigan State and Ohio State, three and four and one and five. So a combined four and nine record against his two biggest rivals. He had one Big Ten championships in seven seasons. He had one college football appearance in seven seasons. By the way, he got spanked by Georgia in that college football appearance. So uh, Michigan, do you think that Jim Harbaugh experience was worth it at the end of the day? 
Me, personally, the answer is no. We're actually sad as an MSU fan that he's leaving because as you can see, he has a losing record against us. So we actually enjoy the Jim Harbaugh experience. I think that at the end of the day, after seven seasons, what did Michigan gain? A Big Ten title? One? Okay, respect. You know, gotta respect that. They earned it this year. But other than that, what do they gain? Like, what do they hang? You know, they... They, they were a good team, but the Michigan brand is a top five, top seven brand in the country. They should be there every single year. Now, if he had two Big Ten titles or maybe three out of the seven years, then okay, that makes sense. Two would have done it. Two would have maybe been like, all right, he deserves it. But just one um, and just one college football appearance, no titles, not even a championship appearance, a championship game appearance. And I know you're saying that you're being harsh on them, but yeah, because Michigan should hold themselves to a very high standard. Uh, this is my opinion. Michigan should hold themselves to a very high standard. Um, they are a big program, and Michigan fans know this. And that's why Michigan fans, some of them are not that upset that he's leaving, because they know that Michigan have not really lived up to the hype that they thought they would with Jim Harbaugh. So at the end of the day, uh, kudos to Jim Harbaugh. Uh, good luck in his NFL career. I really do like him as an NFL coach, by the way. Uh, as, a, as a college coach, not so much NFL coach. I, I do. I think he's going to be okay. I think the Minnesota Vikings got them a solid coach. So we'll see what ends up happening. Um, but this is my three quick takes. Again, sponsored by Hammer Time True Value Hardware, Force and Quick Lube, and Unique Coney Island. So thank you all for listening. Remember, these next two weeks for the Fantasy Guys Wednesday edition, we will be going live with the Hamtramck High School Cosmos Boys Basketball Seniors for a Brotherhood edition. They'll be talking about their journey of growing up together and where they're at in life. And then a Sisterhood edition with the girls Cosmos Varsity Senior Basketball Girls. And they'll be talking about their journey uh, playing basketball together throughout their lives. Uh, we will also have the coaches with us as well. So we are looking forward to that. Make sure you be ready for that. Make sure you tune in next week, Wednesday. Um, we will be doing that live. Um, and hopefully uh, we will uh, have some great shows for you throughout the month of February. Keep tuning in. Subscribe, follow Oz Media on YouTube and Apple and Spotify podcasts as well um, under Oz Media. Thank you very much. And we will see you all next week.